of Jesus. We want to welcome everyone right here to our Victory Outreach Sunday morning celebration service and we're excited for this morning service to exalt the name of Jesus. Come on, is the worship team excited this morning? Every one of us, we're excited but this is what I want you to do this morning. I want you to go ahead, like, comment and share. I mean, like, comment, share the content that we're putting before you this morning because we want the gospel to reach the world for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. But if you're ready this morning, go ahead and stand to your feet and let's open in a word of prayer this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory, oh God. You be at the center, oh God, of everything that takes place throughout the service, oh God. Your name be high and lifted up in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. Good morning, Victory Outreach, Mitchell Splain. This morning, we're going to jump, we're going to dance, we're going to run for Jesus because he has made us free. And who the sun sets free is free.
worship God. Come on, just begin to speak to God. Oh God, you deserve it this morning, God. Oh God. God, we've been sick, but now we are healed, God. Father, break through the place, God. You deserve it this morning. God, people got the words from you. You deserve it this morning. Father, all we are and all the praise you deserve it this morning. Come on, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. deserve it. Come on, you don't need to say a lot to say you deserve it. Come on, in your marriage, in your family, situation you oh you deserve it God you it. oh thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you God oh we thank you for your Holy Spirit that's here this morning we thank you for your love for your grace oh God for your peace oh that's here today God we give you all the honor, God. We give you all the praise. Because you deserve it. Come on with your hands lifted. If it's not already lifted this morning. Maybe you have a pressing need on your heart. You're trusting God for a miracle. We serve a supernatural God. And we're going to trust God together as a family. I don't know what your need is. But this morning, one thing that I do know. As we serve a God that's almighty, that's all-powerful, that's all-seeing. Lift your hands right there where you're at and I'm going to say a prayer for us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you the glory, O oh God. We give you all the honor. We give you the praise because it belongs to you. I pray for every individual, O oh God, that hands is lifted up right there in that room. Oh God, that you would come, oh God, and touch them, oh God. They might have a need, oh God, for healing this morning. They might trust in you, oh God, for different other things. Meet them at the point of need. This morning, oh God, Father, as you are the great I am, you are the peacemaker. Master, we give you all the praise. And we be so careful to give you all the glory. Because you alone deserve it this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, give him a praise. Give him a mighty praise if you believe in victory outreach.
Praise the Lord. Well, today I have the privilege of doing today's tithes and offerings, amen, and also the announcements. But I'm excited. This is the most exciting part of the service when you and I have the privilege to give to the Lord, amen, and that it's biblical, amen, that the Bible says in Malachi that we need to bring our 10% into the house of the Lord, amen. How many believe that, that that's what the Word of God says? So tonight I wanted to, today I wanted to get ready to give, amen, to the Lord as you get ready. Take out your phones. And switch on that app, amen. As you get ready, you can give on the different platforms. You can give via EFT. I mean, you can even direct deposit the finances as you go to any branch, standard bank branch that's very, that's close to you. You can go to any standard bank branch and you can go ahead and direct deposit the finances. I mean, as you go ahead and do that, right there on your phone, I want to read you a portion of text in Second Corinthians 9, 6 and 8. It says, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, but God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And I know that right in Victor Outreach, Mitchell's plane, that God is raising up cheerful givers. How many agree with me? Right there as you're sitting with your phone, you're smiling. Amen. You're getting ready to give and to sow that offering into the kingdom of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if you're ready to give, man, I'm excited for this part. Amen. I'm excited for this part of giving to God and giving to the kingdom. Amen. Because we need to understand that the Bible says, yeah, however you sow, so that's how you're going to reap. And I don't know about you, but I want to reap. I want to reap generously. I mean, I want to reap generously. So then you need to sow generously to today. I mean, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, for each and every giver. Oh God, that you will continue to be with them, oh God, as they sow into your kingdom, oh God. We pray that you continue to cover them, oh God. Bless their households, oh God. Bless their families. Be with us in this time. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. It's October, we're coming together, preparing for one purpose. A united we can effort, run for hope. In 12 different locations, Run for Hope is more than just a 10K or 5K run. It's a movement fueled by passion, courage, hope, faith, and inspiration. Join us for this year's Run for Hope of Unstoppable Help. Register today at runforhope.victoryoutreach.org. We are in it to make a change. God's people are not going to go back the same. And then God says, where well, you said you could not do it, that's the place that I have called you because you're not going to do it, but I'm going to be doing it through you. There are thousands and thousands of people that have been touched, that have come through the home, that have come to our churches. Not only do we have a local vision, but God is going to send you out, and He's going to send you out, and He's going to send you out, and He's raising us up, and many of you are going to be pastors, you're going to be evangelists. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. you've come that we offer oh god our lives to you lord and i pray there will be a revival of prayer a revival of sacrifice a revival oh god of paying the price oh god from the young to the oldest in the name of jesus what we need what we're looking for is abishai's of the vision protectors and guardians of the calling and the vision of victory outreach. God has given us an overall purpose of reaching the inner cities of the world. time of worship that was and just being in the presence of God and it's good to be here this morning with the family once again 
in order just to minister the word of God. And this morning, we just want to let everyone know that we do miss each and every one of you. Um, we are praying for everyone and we can't wait, uh, you know, until we're able to come together once again. And we trust in God that hopefully that will be very, very soon. Amen. But as we continue just to, you know, um, walk together in this manner, you know, by continuing to log on online and tuning into the services, we know that we continue to be enriched and continue to grow together for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. And this morning, you know, uh, I want to thank God firstly for my salvation and the privilege that I have, you know, in order to really um, be able to minister God's word. Hallelujah. I want to thank the ministerial team for the privilege of ministering the word this morning. And I believe God's given us a, or given me a word for, for the church, you know, a word of, of um, remembrance. And also just to help us be aligned with what God has for us moving forward, amen, within our future as a family, as a church, but also as a part of the kingdom of God, hallelujah, knowing that God has greater things in store for our lives. And this morning, you know, um, if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to the book of Haggai, amen, chapter 2, verses 5 to 9, amen. And as you turn there, if you won't mind standing for the reading of God's word, hallelujah, uh, whether you're at home, amen, um, come on, stand to your feet, amen, in reverence to the Lord, amen, who knows we respect God and His Word, amen, which is holy, infallible, and really has carried us until this point, amen, so I want to encourage you to stand to your feet for the reading of God's Word, so Haggai, the book of Haggai, chapter 2, verses 5 to 9, um, Haggai is between Genesis and Revelations, amen, it's in between the hallelujah, so this morning, amen, I know you probably snuggled up, you know, I hope you're not in your pajamas, amen, but w whatever uh, place you find yourself in here this morning, whether you're in your living room, I pray that you are warm on this cold morning, um, who knows that, you know, um, God's really given us the privilege to be in the comfort of our homes this morning, amen, so um, if you're there, you can, amen, just let me know, give me a, a thumbs up with an emoji, hallelujah, amen, and before I read, I also want to thank God for you know, just my wife, amen, and, and uh, my family, uh, just the privilege that I have, you know, to um, be able to have such a beautiful wife and also such anointed kids, amen, and wow, what a, what a message last week, amen, I don't know who was blessed with that message last week, amen, um, I was broken in the presence of God, amen, that message spoke volumes, hallelujah, and I really pray, you know, and I want to thank God for, for my wife's life, amen, and then, um, yeah, I also want to thank God for my pastor, I mean, Pastor Charles Lopez and his wife, Sister Chica, for their love and leadership, even in the midst of these times, hallelujah, that we're able to continue to take territory for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ, and who knows, amen, we're getting ready to continue to expand the vision and to see that the gospel message of Jesus Christ continues to reach even more cities within South Africa and across the borders of Africa as well. So I hope you're ready, amen, I hope you're ready, I hope you're ready to, you know, move with us, amen. As we continue to align ourselves with God's will for our lives. Amen. But this morning, uh, this word is, is, is a word I received um, about four years ago. Amen. And I believe God just reminded me of this word in the week. Amen. It was at the 10-year anniversary at the African conference. I, amen. Um, one, I think it was a Thursday morning where I was right there in the altars. Amen. I was um, given a question. Amen, um, by my leader, and um, in pondering on this question and taking it to the Lord in prayer, God gave me this word, amen, and I know that was the same year that we as a church, we won rolling deep, hallelujah, um, I, I trust God we have an uh, African conference soon, amen, I hope who's going to take that next, amen, hallelujah, but um, this is just the promise that God gave me for our church, Amen, a promise that really uh, we've been able to really pursue and really kind of um, be true to as well, amen. And who knows that in the midst of trying times, that's even when the promise of God gets tested. Uh, but who knows, every promise that God gives, we will see the fruit thereof, amen. So the word of God reads as follows. As for the promise which I made with you when you came out of Egypt, my spirit stands firm and immovable and continues with you. Do not fear, for thus says the Lord of hosts, once more in a little while, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations and they will come with 
the desirable and precious things of all nations. And I will fill this house with glory and splendor, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. The latter glory of this house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I shall give the ultimate peace and prosperity, declares the Lord of hosts. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your word, which is blessed. We thank you, God, that your promises unto us within Christ are yes and amen. But Father, there's a process that you take us on, Father, to prepare us to step into and receive the promise that you have for us. And Lord, this morning, I pray that you would continue to anoint my lips, my mind, and my heart. And Lord, continue to hide me in you. I pray that you be heard, you be seen. Above all else, God, you be glorified, Father. And Lord, you continue to take your place in the lives of your people, Father. Whoever, my God, has, has tuned in this morning, God, whose back might be against the wall, Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, that perfect peace will be their portion, that wholeness will be their portion, that, Father, they would come to realize who they are within you and who you are within them. Father, I pray this morning that, Lord, you continue to bless our hearts and our lives, and, Lord, make us better for your name's sake. Bless this time in your word. In Jesus' name we pray with much thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now, um, within everything now, amen, I, I know that we've been, it's been about almost five months. Hallelujah. <laughs> five months, amen, that we've, uh, since we've been together and since we've been in this lockdown. Hallelujah. Um, and who knows that it, it's been some uh, a trying time. It, it's been a, a challenging time. But who knows that the Spirit of God has continued to strengthen us. The Spirit of God has continued to um, guide us. The, the Word of God has continued to lead us. Amen. And who knows that even in the midst of the season, you know, many of us have, 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 have lost, you know, some certain things. Amen. Certain individuals, certain possessions, certain securities. Amen. And I believe even in the season, God has really revealed himself to us in a, in a very deep way. Amen. Even to the place where, um, you know, we might feel, you know, like our backs are against the wall, like nothing else makes sense. Amen. But who knows that the God that we serve is uh, ever present help in the time of trouble. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. And I, I know for sure that in the season, you and I were able to really identify and experience that aspect of the Father. Amen. And this morning, um, I have a, this portion of text, amen, is um, one of the first um, minor prophets that God used in order to speak to the nation of Israel after they came out of a 70-year captivity to the Babylonian nation, amen. Now, within the captivity, I'm sure that, you know, they were probably pleading, they were probably seeking the face of God, they were crying out to, lo to the Lord, amen, in order to really deliver them and free them from their captivity, amen, and, and before they were captive, amen, Uno, God, God took them on a journey as an Israelite nation, amen, um, he took them on a journey, established the temple, amen, and because of the disobedience and them drifting away from the Lord and worshiping other things instead of the true God, God allowed the enemy to come in and to take them captive. And right there in their captivity is where God continued to minister to their hearts, is where God continued to show them even though they might have been in captivity, God was still in control of the entire situation, of the entire lives as well, amen. And it's there within their captivity, I believe, that they took a different posture. They took a posture of humility. They took a posture of dependency. They took a posture of crying out to God. Amen. And when eventually after the seven year span took, uh, came to an end, they got delivered. Amen. Out of, you know, the, the hands of um, their captors, which was the Babylonian nation. And I believe it was King Cyrus that allowed them to leave, uh, you know, Babylon in order to go into Jerusalem again, in order to, you know, rebuild up the walls of the city, in order to redeem and restore, you know, the glory of the temple, hallelujah. And when he released them to do that, amen, they came into Jerusalem and what they found was something that wasn't too attractive, hallelujah. They, they, they came out of their captivity and they stepped into a city that was torn down. 
They stepped into a city that was in ruins for 70 years. Amen. They stepped into a city. Amen. That was, you know, um, demolished. Hallelujah. And who knows that many times when we step into something that we ask God for, we might not always step into it in the state that we want it to be. Amen. And what God did was that he delivered them out of their captivity, but he also gave them an opportunity to put their hands to the plow in order to, you know, work to see that the city was restored back to its original state and even to a greater glory by them continuing to partner with the Lord. And as they came out of captivity, there was excitement. Hallelujah. They laid the foundation. Amen. Of the temple that they wanted to rebuild. Amen. But because of the lack of resources. Amen. Or even maybe the lack of their own ability. Hallelujah. What they did instead of continuing on with the work of the Lord. They in turn thought that the work was too hard. And instead of continuing on doing what the Lord instructed them to do. They turned away from the work of the Lord and they continued to move forward in building their own houses. Hallelujah. And then many a times, even within this pandemic, amen, I believe that, you know, we haven't really come out in order to build or, or to come to the house of God, amen. And we've been able to identify certain things taking place within our families, within our own lives, amen. And we've been able to make the necessary adjustments in order to get in line with the word of God, in order to get in line with the leading of the spirit of God, hallelujah. But who knows, God wants to do a greater work with inside of our lives. And even before that, you know, in, in, in my uh, uh, short time that I've been working, you walking with the Lord, amen, I've been able to identify this truth. That when we find ourselves in tough situations, we are quick to take a humble posture. We are quick to cry out to the Lord. Amen. And many a times God comes through. When, whenever we cry out to God. Amen. We see that pattern throughout the word of God. When we cry out to God. God responds to the cries that rises from the hearts of his people. Because he never wants to see his people going through troubled times. Amen. Going through unfair times. Amen. And when God comes through, he allows what we went through to serve a purpose within our lives. Amen. But many a times what happens is that we use what God has added to our lives in the time of trouble. And we turn it around in order to build our own lives and no longer to build God's kingdom. Hallelujah. And this was the case with the nation of Israel. That God delivered them out of captivity. They came into Jerusalem, laid the foundation. And when the work became too hard, they turned back and instead of building God's house, they went and they started building their own homes. Hallelujah. Not understanding their purpose as a people. Not understanding their mandate as God's chosen nation through which the entire world would be blessed because of them being on their posts and creating a place that would house the presence of God within their midst. Hallelujah. God then rises up Haggai. Amen. He raises up Haggai in order to speak to the nation of Israel. And God reminds them where they are at. And how their lack of focus and prioritizing has left God's house broken down. Because they lost sight of the Father's will. And gave themselves to fulfilling their own will instead. And I believe even in the midst of this pandemic, amen. One thing we are reminded of is what is more valuable. Doing our own thing or giving ourselves to the will of the Father. Because right now we're able to identify in the midst of the pandemic. In the midst of everything that's taking place. Is that Jesus is not just coming anymore. He's literally on his way. And God has given you and I the mandate, the privilege and the responsibility, the privilege to walk with the Lord, the privilege to get to know his loving kindness, to experience his unfailing love, to experience his grace, amen, to experience his mercy, but not just for ourselves in order to build ourselves up and in order to please and fulfill our own will, but so that we in turn 
may continue to ensure that the will of the Father is being done on earth as it is in heaven. But in order to do that and to step out in that manner, we have to come to a place of acknowledging where we are at. So Yahagah rises up and he speaks to the nation of Israel. He speaks to the leaders first. Amen. Then he speaks to the people. Amen. And he lets them know what they did wrong and how it's stalling the plan and purpose of God for the nation and also for the world at large. Being confronted by God, the leaders first acknowledge their wrong. The people then follow the example by acknowledging their wrong as well. Amen. They acknowledge that we've neglected the work which God has called us to. We've neglected the work and the purpose that we've been saved. We've neglected the work that we've been delivered for. Amen. We've not been delivered for ourselves only. We've not only been delivered for our families. Hallelujah. But we've been delivered for those who are tied to our lives as well. And even if you're going through a tough time right now, I want to encourage you that God is using this in order to push your roots a little bit deeper. Because when you can't find encouragement at the top, when we can't find water at the top, amen, where things can be seen where everyone is able to observe it amen that's when God is telling us or encouraging us to go a little bit deeper to seek his face a little bit more to cry out in the midnight hour amen to uh, storm the gates of heaven to fast a little bit more to give a little bit more in order to seek God's face and to exalt him above everything and everyone else Within our lives. Hallelujah. The people had to acknowledge what was being mentioned. Amen. Now usually when God confronts certain things within our lives. Hallelujah. It's never to condemn us. Amen. It's never to point certain things out in order to make us feel bad. Hallelujah. But I believe that when we feel bad, the Bible says that. True repentance leads to sorrow. Amen. And that repentance, amen, brings us to a place of wanting to turn away from what caused us to feel a certain way. Amen. And when we respond to God in the midst of experiencing that sense of conviction, hallelujah, we're able to see that God's able to use that as a point of reference that encourages us. Never to go back to that place again. Now God then calls the people to consider their ways. And how fruitful they have been in doing their own thing. Or fruitless, should I say. They have been in doing their own thing. Because the Bible says that, you know, they've, they've drank but they haven't been full. They've ate but they are still hungry. They work for wages and put it into purses with holes in it. Which means that they applied themselves to do their th own thing, to do things according to their way and their will. But they have nothing to show for it. They're always empty, they're always wanting, they're always needing more. Why? Because they apply themselves to their own will. Instead of doing things according to God's will. Hallelujah. God then tells them of their lack of satisfaction and how it is the result of them doing their own thing. He then instructs them to get back to building so that his presence can be established in that place. And I'm here to encourage you, my friend, hallelujah, that God has promised us, amen, that as we continue to apply ourselves to his will, to doing things according to his word, amen, to continuing to be a lighthouse, Amen. Where others are able to encounter him whenever they encounter us. Hallelujah. But when we do our own thing, our own will, things according to our understanding and our know-how, we rob others from experiencing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in our lives. And I believe that in the season, even in the loss of certain things, of even certain people that are close to us that we love, Amen. We can get consumed with ourselves. But I'm here to encourage you. Do not fix your eyes on the storm. Instead, fix your eyes 
on the one who's able to calm the storm, on the one who's able to lead you, amen, into higher heights, who's able to show you and give you perspective to your pain, because there's purpose to your pain. There's purpose to whatever you are going through within the season, whatever you've experienced within the season, and when you allow that to be placed in the hands of God, you'll be able to identify that He's able to make things beautiful in its time. He's able to turn things around and use it for His honor and for His glory. He's able to use it to the furtherance of His kingdom. But you and I have to acknowledge what it is that we've been giving ourselves to, whether it is in line with the will of God, even within the word of God. Because the word is, is written well for our lives. And are we doing things based on the word of God? And as we do that, amen, we will continue to see the kingdom of God being established and even expanded. Hallelujah. And I believe that God is preparing us for a great revival, even in the midst of this pandemic, is busy getting us ready that when we are able to step out, we are able to see a great wave of men and women, families, cities, entire nations being impacted with the gospel message of Jesus Christ. But we cannot speak the word of God with conviction if we do not have a fresh experience of his miracle working power within our lives even in the midst of the stuff season God is going to use your experience and your testimony of seeing God in the midst of the stuff time to win someone else over so that they also will come into the fold of God's family hallelujah now the Bible says that here within this portion of text Jesus, uh, uh, God says through the prophet Haggai, he tells them, Amen, I have made a promise with you. My spirit stands firm and immovable and continues with you. Do not fear. The spirit of God is with you and I. The spirit of God is with you and I to guide us, lead us, protect us. Amen. The Bible says that there will be a voice that will tell you, turn left. Turn right, stop, don't go. And that is the leading of the Holy Spirit who will be our teacher and lead us into all truth. And as he leads us into all truth, we know that we will not experience defeat. We will not experience disappointment. But are we willing to do what the Father says? Are we willing to apply ourselves to the leading of the Holy Spirit? Amen. And he goes on to say, for thus says the Lord of hosts, once more in a little while, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and they will come with the desirable precious things of all nations, and I will fill this house with glory and splendor, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. I know about you, but who's experienced the shaking that has taken place. Amen. And usually when there's a shaking, whatever is loose is shaken off. Amen. Whatever is firm, amen, continues to be displayed as that which belongs, amen. And when there's a shaking that takes place, there's a sense of uncertainty. There's a sense of loss, amen. There's a sense of chaos when there's a shaking. But who knows that in the shaking, God is busy sifting out, amen, those who are true sons and daughters of God, those who are being led by the Spirit of God, not just those who walk around with the title of Christian, but those who serve Him and worship Him in spirit and in truth. Because in this season, God is removing the pretenders, hallelujah, from the true worshippers of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Because many a times we can just fall into, amen, the trap of serving God on the surface. That the word of the Lord even says that they worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Amen. And your worship will make a difference within the season. That when people encounter you, they're able to experience and say, there's something different about that person. Even without you opening up your mouth, just by you being in their presence, they're able to pick up something different about you. Why? 
because he embodied the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He goes on to say, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. And this is a promise where God says, everything you need in order to build the kingdom, I have. But I can't release it because maybe your heart is not in line with my will. That's why you're giving yourself and giving yourself, but you're finding yourself empty, you're finding yourself wanting, you're finding yourself unhappy, hallelujah. But when you give yourself to what I want and what, what's in my will for your life and within the earth, you will experience my provision like never before because there's no shortage within the kingdom. There's no shortage within God. Whatever you need, the Spirit of God is able to release those who are listening to the leading of His voice. Pardon me. Amen. Now I want to focus on this last part that says, The latter glory of this house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I shall give the ultimate peace and prosperity, declares the Lord of hosts. Amen. And to me, what stands out of the scripture is God's intent to make things better. Hallelujah. Is God's intent to ensure that his glory is being displayed within the earth. And in order to understand this, you need to understand the glory of the temple before this. It's in the book of 1 Kings chapter 8 where Solomon King Solomon, the son of David, builds a temple unto God. And the Bible says that they quarried out stones in order to, you know, um, build the, the, the foundation. Amen. And the Bible even says that they were not allowed to use hammers in the temple so that there will be no noise of work. Amen. The Bible says that the walls were coated with gold. The floor was coated with gold. Amen. There was choice things placed inside of the temple. Hallelujah. Because it had to display the glory of God. And it displayed the glory of God through the materials used in order to build the temple. But I'm here to encourage you that there's a new temple that God wants to establish. Not built with human hands. Amen. But a temple that is able to make his presence known within the earth. And according to 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17, the Bible says, Do you not know and understand that you, the church, are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God dwells permanently in you, collectively and individually. If anyone destroys the temple of God, corrupting it with false doctrine, God will destroy the destroyer. For the temple of God is holy, sacred, and that is what you are. And I'm here to encourage you that no longer will the glory of, God's, of God be displayed in a building. No longer will the glory of God be displayed in what man can do. But it will be displayed in how man lives within the earth in the midst of trying times. That no longer is, you know, a, a building or things on the exterior. Something that displays God's glory. But it's when you and I build our lives and align ourselves with God's word in such a way that our lives are able to house the very presence of God. Amen. That is God's intention for you and I. That the spirit of God comes to love and dwell on the inside of you and I. And when the Spirit of God lives inside of you and I, my brother, when the Spirit of God lives inside of you and I, my sister, hallelujah, we are able to give birth to the fruits of the Spirit that when there's death, we're able to speak life. When there's bitterness, we're able to speak joy. When there's a brokenness, we're able to speak love. Amen. We're able to bring about peace. Not by you saying anything, just by you being there. Why? Because you are the temple of God. You and I are the very temple that will ensure that the glory of God is displayed within the earth, wherever we go. 
Ephesians 2.18 says, For it is three, through Him that we both have a direct way of approach in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, outsiders without the rights of citizenship, but you are fellow citizens with the saints, God's people, and are members of God's household, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone in whom the whole structure is joined together and it continues to increase, growing into a holy temple in the Lord, a sanctuary dedicated, set apart and sacred to the presence of the Lord in him and in fellowship with one another, you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Hallelujah. And the glory of God. Amen. The latter house shall be greater than the former house. The former house was built with stone. It was built with gold. Hallelujah. But the latter house is built by God himself. It is the house and the, the temple that God formed himself out of the dust of the earth. He fashioned you and I according to his likeness. That we are able to house his presence. That whenever people come into contact with us, when we house the presence of God, they're able to come into contact with the very divine nature of God himself. When there are those who are sick, we're able to lay hands on them. And the Bible says they will recover. Hallelujah. We're able to speak life into dead situations. We're able to bind and rebuke the things that are trying to tear down the temple of God. And when we declare life, things will change. Why? Because we acknowledge and realize that we are now the temple of God. And how are we able to build up the temple? Through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know in the season there's many things that has attacked your faith. That has made you to think that God is not true. That has led you to believe that what God says won't come to pass. But I'm here to declare that the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. I'm here to declare that whatever Jesus said will come to pass. Surely he will do. But you and I have a responsibility to align ourselves with the word of God. What has happened has happened. We can't change what has happened. But you and I can now, if you've walked against the word, you're able to repent. Say, Lord, forgive me. For giving myself to my own will. And even using your house for my agenda. For using your word for my agenda. But when you and I come to a place of acknowledging, Lord, forgive me. For walking against your will for my life. And you say, Lord, I'm making a decision to turn away from that life. And to follow you. And I promise you, when you follow God. The glory of God will fill your life so much so that your life will start being a weapon that God can use to set the captives free. To set those who are bound to liberate them. Amen. But you and I have to come to a place of acknowledging. I would even call it our foolishness of wanting to do our own thing. Amen. And take a posture of humbling ourselves before God. Of giving ourselves to the word of God. Amen. And as we give ourselves to the word of God, we know that it would encourage our fellowship together with one another. That's why you're able to see, amen, those who are eager to walk in the will of God. Even those that join in the get rooted discipleships, hallelujah. We're able to grow together, start speaking one language. If we have certain questions concerning the word, we're able to grow together so that you and I are able to align ourselves with the will of the Father. Amen. Because God is using His house, He's using His temple, which is you and I, in order to get those who are on the outskirts, those who are far off, to bring them into the fold of God so that they can become rapture ready. Because we... If Jesus is on his way, he wants to take those with him who belongs to him. And the Bible says all those who have fallen asleep in him. Remember the Bible says they didn't die. They fell asleep in him. 
So those who we've said goodbye to, amen, those who we've, we've laid to rest, hallelujah, they're simply sleeping. They're not dead. They're not gone. They're simply sleeping. And the Bible says that when we live our lives according to the word of God, that there will come a time when Jesus comes on the clouds with the sound of a trumpet of the archangel and those who are sleeping in him, they will rise first. And then you and I as the temple of the most high God, we will be caught up. With Jesus. Are you and I living in a way that we will be caught up with him? Or are we so consumed with ourselves and our will. That we won't even identify when it happens. But I believe God's gave, given me this word. And given me a word to remind us as a family. To remind us as a church. To remind us as a people. That whatever you've gone through. It does not dictate the purpose God has for your life. It's only an indicator that God wants to do great and mightier things in and through your life. But are you willing, amen, to accept that purpose that God has for you and I? And I want to encourage you, there will be no greater joy for your life that when you take that posture and say, Lord, no longer my will, but your will be done. Imagine how hard it was for Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Knowing that he was going to be beaten. Knowing that he was going to be betrayed. Knowing that he was going to be crucified for you and I. And what did he say? Father, if at all possible, let this cup pass me by. But nonetheless, not my will, but your will be done. Amen. And he gave himself over to the will of the Father. And because of the will of the Father does not mean that he did not experience tough times. But we're able to identify the results of those tough times. That because he went to the cross, because he died, because he rose again on the third day, ascended into heaven. Now you and I can have a better life. No longer are we bound to drug addiction. No longer are we bound to loose living. But we are freed and set apart so that we're able to be caught up with the Father or with Jesus on that day when he returns. And what a glorious grace we have received, not only for ourselves. But to pass it on to someone else as well. But we have to come to a place of acknowledging that we are the temple of God. We are the temple that will display a greater glory than the former house. The latter house. The glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. Amen. Not just about what's taking place. God's going to bring about. The revival is already taking place. Amen. Amen. But revival means bringing to life, restoring life or consciousness to something that once was popular, active and important. Amen. Don't ever forget how desperate we were for change. Let us never forget how desperate we were to get out of the lifestyles that held us bound. That same feeling that you and I had back then, someone else has right now. Amen. And they're able to encounter change when they come into contact with you. A temple that is mindful of whose will he is to fulfill. Of whose will she is to fulfill. And as we give ourselves to the will of the Father, we know that his glory will be displayed in and through our lives. Not to make us great, but to glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And my encouragement is, now is the time for revival. But the revival will come through men and women, through the church that understands that the meaning of their lives was to display the glory of God. And as we grow in that posture, we know that change, transformation will take place. And you and I have a choice whether it's going to take place with us or without us. But I'm here to encourage you. God wants it to take place with you. So let us continue. Amen. To acknowledge where we are at. To consider our ways. Whether we are truly doing what the will of the Father wants from our lives. Amen. And if that is not you, amen, this morning. I want you to stand to your feet this morning. Hallelujah. I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to close your eyes.
while there's breath in our lungs, while there's still our eyes are still open, while we are still on this side of life, we have an opportunity to make a difference. We have an opportunity to choose differently. Because one of the things that God will never take away from you and I is the freedom to choose. You and I, we must make a choice. God will never force his will upon our lives. We have to choose it. But if you and I are brutally honest with ourselves, our way has never worked. Our will has never worked. It just made things worse and brought us into bondage even more. Because the enemy made us think we were choosing for ourselves, but actually we were playing to his tune. But I want to encourage you. When we choose the will of God, you will find a liberty and a freedom that you have never experienced ever before within your life. But it's available to you. You and I, we have to choose His will. And if that's you, say, you know what, Lord? I want your will. I don't just want to go after what looks good. I don't just want to go after what sounds good. I don't just want to go after what feels good. I want to do what you said I must do. And that's you, I want you to lift up your hands. Come on, surrender your life to the Lord right there where you are. I know the season has been hard. I know it's been tough. I know you feel like you're unfair. Amen. Like it was unfair. Like God doesn't understand you. Like God doesn't know what he's doing. But I'm here to encourage you. That only if you allow yourself to su surrender. Amen. To stop kicking against the goat. Stop going against what God wants. Amen. Surrender. God will give you perspective. He will show you. The things that you need to see. And when he gives you perspective, you'll be able to position yourself a little bit different. And when you position yourself a little bit different, you'll set yourself up to be a part of the biggest revival that this world will ever see. Let not this moment pass you by. Come on, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your love and for never giving up on me. Forgive me, O oh God. For doing things my way. Thinking I was pleasing you. Help me oh God. To go after your will. To do my God Lord. What you instruct me to do within your word. And as I align myself. And humble myself to you. Help me oh God. To display your glory. Within the earth. Because the same way you promised Abraham in Genesis 12. That through your loins. The nations of the world, the families of the world will be blessed. And Father, that purpose, that plan, I'm included in that. But I need to align myself to see your will being done in my life and it continuing to echo in the lives of those who I come into contact with as well. So today I ask that you would forgive me, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, align me, O oh God, back to your will and continue to be glorified in and through my life in Jesus mighty name if you do not know Jesus here this morning I want you to lift up your hands as well you say you know what um, I've tried doing things my way I take 20 steps forward but I always take 40 steps back I try doing things my way and in my own strength hallelujah if I did not acknowledge I needed help when I was caught up on drugs I would not be here today but because I was honest with myself in acknowledging my need, that is when I allowed God to step in. And when God stepped in, my friend, this is almost the 14th year I've been walking with Him. My life has never ever been the same again compared to what I come from. And what He did for me, He's able to do for you as well. If that's you, I want you to lift up your hands. Come on, say, Jesus. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus. Thank you for loving me just the way I am, but loving me too much to leave me the same. This morning, I realize that you are the Son of God. You died on the cross for my sins, and you rose again on the third day, victorious over death, sin, and hell itself. And this morning, I surrender my life to you. Have your way in me. Use my life as a temple to house your presence that wherever I go, you are able to bring about change. Father, have your way in me, in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for every person that said that, pray that you would forgive them of their sins, cleanse them from all unrighteousness, and continue to lead them in the way everlasting, in Jesus' mighty name. 
If you said that prayer, I want to encourage you, the number appearing on the scene right now. We want you to contact us. Let us know, amen, if you made that commitment. We want to walk a journey with you. It might not be physically as yet, but we want to stay in contact with you and see that you're moving in the right direction, amen. And we want to let you know that Jesus loves you. No matter what you come from, no matter what people say, no matter what you might think about yourself, He loves you. That's why He allowed you to hear this word today, because He loves you and He wants to use your life not as someone else used you not as the world used you they just use you lift your eye and dry but God wants to use your life so that you're able he adds value to you first you're able to add value to others that you come into contact with amen just want to let you know we love you family we're praying for you all God bless you amen